In the first step, you have to stop me with any question, okay? In the first step, we have my data and I add the one to have an intercept, okay? And this belongs to our K1 plus one. I put plus one because I put this one, okay? Then I do the following. For L equal one, Z2 is going to be a parameter theta one times the one before A1. And this contains all the parameters that I need for the, all the linear combinations. Remember, I started here and I do a lot of linear combinations. These linear combinations are here. I apply, sorry, this one. I apply the, uh, I apply to the, to the C the activation function and I add a one because then I go again, I do linear combination and I apply the activation function, etc. And then uh, if I finish when I'm in L equal L minus one, this is going to be the AL capital L. And in that case, the capital L is a different maybe activation function without the one because I finish since this is going to be my predictor. Again, a vector that has to have dimension the same one that the first one. It doesn't matter how many I use in the middle, at the end I have to use the same amount. And it has to be between zero and one. This is the algorithm, and I have to find the theta that adjusts to the data. In order to adjust to the data, we need to have a cost function. The cost function for one data, when I have a lot of data set, the end data set, I have to make another sum here, okay? But it's complicated enough with one. <laughs> for one data set, the loss function is this one. And I tried to explain yesterday what is the meaning. Suppose we have a y that has a one zero, this is the true one, zero because it was a one hot, it was a classification. And therefore, when I see this one here, the coordinates, for the first coordinate, this is the, uh, this one is going to be there, and this is not going to be there this term because this is zero. And for the other coordinates, this is going to, um, for the other coordinates, uh, this is the, uh, disappear and this is going to appear because it's one minus zero, okay? And then I told you for this particular case, the cost is going to be y uh, one log a one l plus the sum of the rest. One minus only sorry, this is one is one here they are zero the log of a j m. And I show you that this is our my predict my, my, pre my, my prediction. Is if it's a perfect prediction, means if it's a perfect prediction, my AL is going to be one and the rest zero. Okay? We are not going to have perfect prediction, but I want to show the cost function. In that case, we have the log of one, zero, plus, oh sorry, this is one minus. So, I have the log of one that is zero plus the log of one minus zero that is zero. The cost function is zero. In all the other cases, when this is between zero and one, this is, is negative and this is negative. Therefore, the cost function is always negative. This is for one data point. We are going to do everything for that one data point, then you have to add, of course. Uh, okay, this is the cost function. I sold you the cost function, cost function, and now I say, okay, in order to get my all my thetas, that they are a lot, I'm not going to compute, they are here I have all these parameters, for each of them I have a lot of parameters. I have how many uh, theta L? I have exactly theta one until theta L minus one. I stop it here. These are all my parameters. I have a lot of parameters. And I have to do the der derivative of this with respect to that parameter. To all, I mean, my big t theta, this is my big theta. 
I cannot even put like this because this is at all different size, but I mean, let's put it there. Why? Because now we have a theta and I start with the theta zero means I start with the initial value here and I use, I use the iteration saying I take the one before and I add the direction of the gradient. I put positive here because I want to maximize this because it's always negative and I would like to be the cost to be zero and then I had to maximize that. This is why it's a plus. Okay, what is the only thing that we have to do? The only thing that we need to do is the derivative, is this derivative. And then to put in the computer, we need to think how we put in the computer. But the goal now is to compute this derivative. Okay. The first thing that we are going to see is uh, section three. And may, ah, okay, one thing, important thing. Let me write one of them that is I seen is number is number uh, three. If I have a function from Rm to Rn, okay, then the derivative of f with respect to x is a matrix that is going to be n by m. I know that some, some people are doing in the other direction. This is why it's like a notation. What is the meaning of this? If it's rm plus m, mean I have f in x is f1 in x. F, okay, I will put like this, f1 in x, like a vector, fn in x. And then my derivative with respect to x is going to have here the gradient of f1 transpose. The gradient means the derivative of f1 with respect to all my variables. If I put transpose, means that it is 1 by m. And here I put all of them. 1 by m, and I then is m by m. OK? Now, what happened that we are going to have matrices here. My, my functions are going to be, because look at this, the AJL, the AJL depend of CL, and the CL depend of AL minus one, etc., etc. I mean, uh, to see the dependence of the parameter, we have to go in that direction, no? Therefore, we are going to have vector, uh, matrices instead of vector, okay? But then we are not going to use matrices, we are going to use the VEC operation in this sense. I want to compute the derivative of f with respect to, let me say, theta 1, suppose. This is a matrix. For me, this is going to be the derivative. I'm not going to compute this. I'm going to compute this at the end. But to be able to use what we know about calculus, we are going to compute the derivative of f with respect to the VEC transpose of theta 1. I will say immediately what is this. Do you know what is the back operation? The back of a matrix? The back, okay, no, it's okay, then we will see. The back of a matrix, the back, I have a matrix A, A11, AN1, A21, AN2, A. So this is 1, 2, and uh, 1, M, and M. The back of A is a vector where you put first the first column. It's a big vector. You put the first column. Then you put the second column. And then you put the last column. Okay? You compile all the columns together. Now we are in, in our calculus class, and I put vector transpose because it means I take the derivative and I will put in this direction. Okay, let's try to see um, uh, 
Okay, okay, because if we want to use this one, we need here to have a vector. And then if f is in Rn, this is going to be the derivative, is going to be a matrix that is n times the dimension of this. We will see more about this, don't worry. Okay, or we can compute what derivative that we need a lot. Okay, just to practice this one. What is some, something that we are going to need always to take the derivative? Look at this. When I take the derivative of c with respect to the first parameter, or with respect to the first parameter will be one thing that I want to convince you first. Our goal is to compute the derivative of the cost function with respect to the vec of theta l with L, and I will put in this direction, L minus 1 to 1. I will convince you immediately why I do in the backward, and here is the backward propagation. You will realize immediately. First, this one. This cos function is a number. And this is a vector that has dimension k, kL plus 1 times kL plus, uh, kL sub plus 1 times kl plus 1. Therefore, this is a big vector, no? The vec of theta l is a huge vector, okay? This derivative, what is going to be this derivative? What is the dimension of this derivative? Is 1 times the dimension. It's going to be like this. Okay? Every time I want to, suppose, I, why, let me see, why I'm going to compute first the derivative with respect to L minus 1, theta L minus 1. I want to convince you now that the first one I want to, I want to, com, to, to take is this derivative. Why? You will be convinced immediately, but let's suppose that everything are numbers, because this is the best way to understand this. If we want to compute the derivative of the cos function with respect to theta l minus 1, what do we do? We have the model here. Okay, let's see where is theta l minus 1. The, our, my function depends on a l, okay? And AL is what? AL is G tilde M of CL. You agree with that? And then CL is what? We are in a small L equal L minus 1, CL is what? Z capital L is what? Theta L minus 1, okay, because this is L, this is L minus 1, A L minus 1. And then, what is the derivative of the cos function with respect to the first one? Why is the first one? Because if I want to compute with respect to L minus 2, I have to go one more step. I have to go from AL minus 1 to ZL minus 1, ZL minus 1 that goes to theta L minus 2. And then in some way I had to pass from to this theta L, uh, AL minus 1. And then this, this is why it's called backward propagation. Because in some way, it's not that I have to compute the same, but look at this. I have to go first to this one. This is the first one that is going to appear. And then it's going to appear the theta L minus 2. And then let's stop here. If I want to compute the derivative of c with respect to theta l minus 1, what do we do? Chain of rule. Suppose that is everything is a number. How do we compute this? OK. 
help me because in other case we are going to be all lost. So how, how do we do this? It doesn't, no, don't use back. Let's use our, all our number. What do we do? We go first to what? To AL, no? And then what do we do? AL with respect to what? ZL, no? C, CL, yes. And then we go CL with respect to theta L minus 1. And we finish. Okay, suppose I want to compute, and this is, a, then I will erase and I will do the computation. But suppose I want to give you an idea. Now I want to compute, let's continue one more step. One, we can do two steps, we can do all the steps, no? You believe in <laughs> Suppose now I want to go to the theta L minus 2. What is the next step here? This is C of G tilde M of what? What do I have to do here? Write my AL minus 1 as what? As a function of, this is, is L minus 1 here, is, now I'm going to put another function, uh, uh, G, uh, I will put F, no? Because I have to do all of this. Is the C of, I'm here in AL minus 1, then here is going to be a function of L minus 1. And the next step is what? I write CL minus 1 as theta L minus 2 of C, sorry, of A, L minus 2. Okay, let's do the computation. If I want to do the derivative of C with respect to the back, this is all wrong, no? Until now, because this back is going to make a mess. But let me see, what do you do? You go to AL. Then you go to ZL. This is the same. But then what do you have to go? We go to CL. But then we have to continue. We have to go to this one, to this one, to get this one. Therefore, here is going to be CL with respect to AL minus 1, AL minus 1 with respect to CL minus 2, minus 1, so, and CL minus 1 with respect to theta L minus 2. The only common part, part with this one is what? This part, repeat it here. And then we have to put something new. This is a similar, but they are different. What happens now if we want to go one more step, L minus 3? We have to do all this step until here, and here are going to appear CL minus 1 with respect to AL minus 2, AL minus 2 with respect to CL minus 2, L minus 2 with respect to theta L minus 3. It's like a part is repeated, and then I have to do a new part. Because it's a chain of rule. It's like this part is the same, but here I cannot go here because theta doesn't depend on the, this is a parameter. Okay, we have to go to the, the one before, the one before, the C before, and here I write here. When I do one more, it's exactly this one, and I have to repeat the next one. And this is why it's going to be called, we are going to do the details, and we, you will see again this. This is why it's called um, backward propagation. Because once you are compute this one, and you are smart enough to call 
this part or this part, you see that there is a way to compute one from the other. Suppose I have, I compute this. After I compute this, it's a very easy way to compute all of this. After I compute this one, it's an easy way to compute the thing that I need. The only thing I need to know is how to compute these things. And the rest is like backward propagation. I compute the first one, and then I put in a machine uh, that this part is multiplied by that, this part, and I get all the derivative. This is the idea, and this is why it's called backward propagation. But now we have to do it right, because of course we have the back, etc. But this is the general idea what we are going to, now we are going to compute things. Okay, first thing, how is the chain of rule? When you have back and these type of things. Okay, the chain of rule is the one that is here. Florencia, you want one? Okay, chain of rule. I'm not going to write the chain of rule because it's a very easy, I mean, we are coming back to three, okay? I define the back operator, okay? I define the back operator already. Some definitions, this is I'm going to erase, but uh, we will use a lot the this definition. Then we have the, um, the one that I defined the other day that it was M times W, this is our two matrices with their own dimension, it doesn't matter. The product is, if this is P1 times P2 and this is P3 times P4, this product is P1, P3 times P2, P4. And it's defined like M, the first M co coordinate of M times the matrix W, this is already, you have P3 by P4, elements M1, P2, W. And if you see the number of columns, it's going to be P2 by P4. And then I put all of this, the same here, P1, 1, P1, P2, W. It's a huge matrix. But the nice thing, and you have to prove this, because I'm not going to prove, this is the property two that is in page six, is that if I have A, B, C, if I have A times B times C, is because I can multiply the matrices, okay? Means the number of columns here is the number of rows here, the number of columns here is the number of rows here, okay? If I do the back of this, the property is, okay, you have a matrix, you did the back. This is the same that C transpose times, let me, uh, let me convince you with the dimensions, back of B. Let's see. Suppose A is P1 times P2, and this is P2 times P3, P3 times P3, P3 times P4, okay? Therefore, this back, this back is a vector that is, the product is P1 times P4, is a vector that is a dimension P1, P4. Do you agree with that? I mean, I didn't do anything. I'm not going to check the equal, I'm going to check only the dimensions. Okay. C transpose is P4 times P3. And A is dimension P1, P2. Therefore, the, the um, tensor product is P4, P1 times P3, P2. Okay. The back of B is P2, P2, P3 times 1. Oh, okay, I can multiply this because this is P1 times P4 times the same dimension. At least I can multiply. And the, the product is P1, P4 times 1, the same dimension. 
I'm not saying it's right, but the dimensions are right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Ah, no, no, I put the, yeah, but then I put the product that, yeah, is, yeah. Thanks. Okay? This is, we're going to use this. I will erase because I need a space, but we have there. Then the chain of rule. Okay. I told you if we have a function at n times n, my derivative, I will write like this, back of f, it doesn't matter. The back of a vector is the same vector. Sometimes I put back, but it's the same vector. Vector transpose of x is dimension n by n. And now if I have the this is a, now is the four. If f is f of f1 on f2, etc., the chain of rule is like this. The derivative of the back of f, back transpose of x, is equal. The derivative of the back of f, with respect, is the same than before, f1, as we do before, but here I put transpose, and here I don't put the transpose. Because in other case, the dimensions are not going to match. Until the last one, what I mean here, if I put something in between, as before, as when we do a chain of rule, here I have to put in the in like row and here like column. Why? Because then the dimension match, because this is going to be n times m1, and because here is a vec, is m1 times n2, etc. If I don't put the transpose and here the vec, the product is not, with this definition, is not going to match. This is the only thing that we have to know about the chain of rule. It's exactly than before, but since we are going to have matrices here, look at this. We are going to have matrices in between. We need to put, to use that chain of rule. Okay. Number five. I'm not going to write number five. Number five says, remember that A, A depends on C in the sense that I put one, uh, I apply the activation function in each of the rows, okay? One thing I'm going to do is to write, okay, the, this one, this is a vector, okay? The A is a vector and C is a vector. And we will see why this is the notation. I will make a construction of a vector that has in the first row the derivative of the first component with respect to the first component. Second component with respect to the second component. It doesn't make sense, but we will see immediately why it makes sense. Be, look at this. I will convince why it's a good notation. I will erase this. Suppose I want to do the derivative of A, let me put back, even if it's a vector of A, A L, with respect to the vector transpose, that is a vector true of C, L. What, this is a vector. And this is a vector. We saw that to do this derivative, I had to take the first coordinate and do the derivative with respect to all the C. Okay? Then this is going to be a matrix that it has the dimension 
here the dimension of A and here the dimension of C that is the same. What is the derivative? Remember how I make the A. How do I make the A? Let's see again. How do we make the A? What is A1? Let me write here. What is A1? The first coordinate. AL is the first coordinate. How is the first coordinate? This was a map that we saw yesterday. The first coordinate is apply this function that is in R only to what? To the first component. Then is my activation function, the, the tilde one, because it's a different one because we are in the end, in C1, in the first coordinate, C tilde C2, until the end C KL of L. Okay, to do that derivative, we have to take the first one and take the derivative with respect to all the coordinates in C. How is, the, is this derivative? This is a vector, and I have to take the derivative of the first coordinate of A to put in the first row is the first coordinate of A with respect to all the variables, with respect to Z1 to ZKL. How is this derivative? What is the derivative with respect? Look at this. The first coordinate, it depends only on the first coordinate of C. Therefore, this is I can compute. They are all zero. And this one is going to be this derivative in C1L. Agree? When we go to the second one, it depends only on the second one. Then this is 0, C2L. It's a diagonal matrix. And in the diagonal, it contains what I call G prime map. Look at this, it's G prime map. I mean, this is to put in the computer because you don't want to put a metric. It's P by, I mean, it's a huge metric and it doesn't have information. This is algebra, no? <laughs> it's, a, it's a trivial algebra. <laughs> I cannot tell you how much time I spent to understand and to put this in a, in a, at least I understand, I don't know the rest. And the same for the other notation, for G in the middle, okay? I do the same. I don't take into account this one because it's zero, it's not going to matter. Okay. Next one. This is like you have a, a, a trip all around the, the basic algebra in some way. I don't know. It's With all this trick, it's going to be very easy to compute the derivative, believe me. There is one more. Everybody knows what is the Hadamard product? The Hadamard product is you have two matrices of the same dimension. And the Hadamard product is the one, the natural one. It's a matrix of the same dimension with the, with the product of each component. It's the Hadamard product, it's the natural one. The interesting thing about this uh, is if you have two, and I will, you will see why, if you have two vectors, two vectors, then the Hadamard product of the two vector, that is what? A, B, I, because they are vector, is the same that to write in this complicated way. 
diagonal of B times, this is the usual product, sorry. This is a mistake, this is the usual product. Well, let's see why. Okay, the dimension, this is P by one, and this is P by P times P by one is the same dimension. And if you do the multiplication, this is, is A1, AP, when you multiply by the diagonal, is you multiply B1, BP, is the same. Okay? The, but they are both vectors, because, ah, okay, it's to put, it's the one that we did before, it's the diagonal, it's the one that we put before. It's like in MATLAB, in R, whatever, you put it, it's, the, it's like a program scene, no? It's the one that we did before. Okay, and the last one that I have to write because we will use, I will put it here. Is the following. I will define this quantity. I will say what is everything, don't worry. And there is a mistake there because it should be for L equal L minus one, two in the opposite. This is a definition. Okay. Let's see. This is our all Hadamard product. We already defined is a vector that I told you is a vector of dimension KL. It's the one that we did. It has all the derivatives. This is GT in sorry. Because they're different one. Okay, this is a vector. This should be a vector and this should be a vector. This is a vector. Remember the Y was in this was the estimation of the Y. This has the same dimension and it has dimension RKL. And here is like a notation where I do a vector, we have one over first coordinate of A, one minus first coordinate of A, the same for the each of them. They have all the same dimension. This is going to be for the derivative. Look at this. I define if I have my prediction and I have DL, I can compute this. Now, the second one, that is L minus one, backward propagation, L minus one, it says, let me write one. Theta L minus one is going to be, ooh, this method, I don't know what is this, I will tell you immediately. Times G prime map C L minus one. Okay, let's see. This matrix, Remember that this matrix, we add a column for the intercept. The, the tilde one is the same without the intercept, okay? Therefore, the dimension of the tilde is KL plus one times KL for L, no?
Therefore, this has dimension, help me. This has dimension K L times K L minus one. Okay. Let's see the dimension. This one was dimension K L. Since I do the transpose, the product is dimension. This is the usual product K L minus one. And then I do the product with the g prime map the cl minus one that again because of the definition has dimension a minus one i can do the product okay and so on you have to do the computation but the idea is once i have this I can compute the l minus one when i have the l minus one I two and so on there is a formula to go from this is why it's wrong here in the notes the opposite. Leave this because I need this. And the derivative, believe me, is that we can write this as This is a usual product. What I have to do is to take the transpose, and then once I do the transpose, I use this about diagonal, and I get exactly this one. Okay? Believe me, this is a computation you can do. No, this is wrong. L plus one. We go always in backward. Okay, we have everything. Now we can compute the, the derivatives. That is the only tell you what it is, but this is very easy. Okay. Okay, we don't need, uh, here, we, we are going to compute first the theta L minus 1, okay? The only thing that I need to put here is vec transpose vec transpose Vec, vec transpose. Look at this. This one is here and is here. The similar, no? They are similar, or in the sense that is AL with respect to CL, and is AL minus one with respect to CL minus one. This is are going to be all similar. And then the similar ones are going to be this one. But okay, let's compute this one. We need always the first derivative is the derivative of C with respect to V transpose of A. This is, as we know, is a vector because this is a number and this is a vector with respect to the first coordinate, the second coordinate, the L co coordinate, okay? What is the derivative of C with respect to the first coordinate? Once we do the first, we do any. Let's do one. The only way that depends on the first coordinate is what? Is y1, the other don't, don't depend, no? Is the log of a1 plus 1 minus y1, the first coordinate, log of 1 minus a1. The rest are exactly the same. How I make the derivative? This is pretty easy, no? Is y1 divided is the derivative of the log because I'm de de making the derivative with respect to this. Mass 1 minus plus this one divided 1 minus a1l. I need a minus, okay? Do you agree? Yes, because we have a minus here. And this is, can be written as a1L, 1 minus A1L, and now I have Y1 minus, okay, I have to do the computation. 
is okay the same here and the same here But this is exactly what I wrote you there. Look at this. This is, is, let's see if we believe me, this vector times Hadamar 1 minus this vector. Do you agree? I mean, it's the product. It's that one. We already compute this. It was the what? The diagonal of what we call G prime map of CN. And the last one that we need and this is the one that is, it's not tricky, but it's nice to learn. This is, is with respect to the vector transpose of theta L minus 1. No? It's the last one. Okay. Let me write. Okay. How do we write ZL with respect to theta L minus 1. It's a linear product. I mean, it's a, a, it's a linear combination. It's directly theta L minus 1 times AL minus 1. And now, this should be A, no? The derivative. I, I, I take the derivative in R. Ax, sorry, xA with respect to x is this derivative is a, no? It has to be a, no? But these are all the back. And then I use what we know about the back operation. I told you this is a transpose. Transpose, oh sorry, this is the derivative of what? Times. Before the uh, remember the this is we know we need this back of a b c is transpose times a back of b. Here we need the theta alone, and therefore this is going to be like the transpose for the theta we have the identity times the back of theta l minus one. With respect to vec transpose theta L minus 1. And that's it, because now this is a constant, really. And if I take the derivative of the vec of something with respect to the same transpose, believe me, this is the identity. You can do the computation. The vec of x with respect to the vec transpose of x is exactly the identity. And therefore, the product is more or less what we assume it was going to be, but we had to put some, the identity here is because this has a dimension KL minus 1, this is, is KL minus 1.
Yes. No, because it's the same L. It's a good question. When we go here, it's the same dimension, but we are here, it's the same dimension. But it's here. It's the same dimension because C, the only thing that is doing A is to apply, I mean, it has the same dimension because I have C, and the only thing that is doing A is applying the function G to each coordinate. Therefore, it has to have the same dimension. We call G prime map to that one. Do you remember to the vector where it has the derivative with respect to the first one, the second one, the third one? Okay, we can do <coughs> because of the notation. This is stupid notation. Okay. Now I have to do the product of all of them. No? I'm computing this one. I'm computing this one. I have to do the product of this times this times this. Okay? And, okay. Okay, the product of this with this one is exactly the transpose of this. We will see this. Okay, I will say the transpose, I'm saying the transpose of this is equal. Why the first part, all of this part, the first part times the diagonal of G prime because of the thing that we saw some, uh, before. Therefore, the old is one is no more than theta L transpose times AL minus one transpose time identity. Look at how smart, they call only this part theta L, okay? Let's do one more. When we want to do one more is, oh, okay, I already know. This is called theta delta L transpose. And we have to do these two derivatives, okay? Okay, let's see. We are not going to make all the derivatives. This one is theta L transpose because we call there. This one is similar to, here is L with respect to L minus one. And here is L minus one with respect to L minus two. It's going to be the same, and the same that is going to be AL minus two times another identity, this transpose. Because it's exactly the same. Here, instead of theta L minus 1, I have L minus 2, L minus 2, L minus 2. L minus 2, L minus 2, L minus 2. This is L minus 2. Nothing new. I have to compute this one. I already compute similar because it's the same one. This with respect to this one. Is the diagonal, sorry, this is what the sheet did, because it's, it's the last step, sorry. Here I have L minus 1 with respect to L minus 1. Okay, it's going to be the same, but the diagonal, here is going to be the diagonal of what? Of G map of C L minus 1. The only new is this one. Because as CL with respect to AL minus one. We go backward in some way. It's the only new one. Okay. This is we already compute. 
This is similar, and you believe me that it's Cl minus 1, and this is similar because it's A line minus 2. And the only thing that we have to compute really is the derivative of the back of Cl with respect to the back transpose of Al minus 1. This is the new one that we have to compute. In fact, here, um, this is diagonal. I had to put the diagonal, and I had to put for the, sorry. And here is, I made a mistake. I had to add a zero, no? Because when we are in the others, look at this. When I de make the derivative of this with respect to each of the component, here I get the same, but here I have a one that I have an extra zero, OK? Here I have an extra zero. Mm. Here, I have an extra C. OK, the only one that we need to compute is this one. OK. How do I compute this one? How? Before we have L, this one with respect to this one, the same number. But when we want to compute, now we have Z. Look at what we have now. We have ZL with respect to AL minus 1. Therefore, I have to use this formula. I mean, the ZL, this is, is the derivative of theta L minus 2, no? A, no, I have to look. ZL is all one less. OK, CL minus 1, AL minus 1. With respect to the back transpose, AL minus 1. How do we compute this? Again, look at this. Now, I want the A to be alone. OK? This is the constant. Of course, this derivative has to give me theta in some way. To do that, now I take it away and say, OK, this is, is the derivative of, this is a number, 1, because this is a vector, 1 times theta L minus 1, vec AL minus 1, with respect to the vec transpose. Well, OK, this is going to be 1 times this, but 1 times something is the same theta L minus 1. OK. I will write here, because it's a mess there, what we got for the derivative of C with respect to the second one. is theta L transpose times this one that I compute that is theta L minus 1 times this diagonal of G prime C L minus 1 0 times AL minus 2 times the identity, this transpose. If I look this, this product, because this is all zero, this is the same that to put the tilde to take away the last and to take away the zero. But if you look all together, by definition, this was what? Delta L minus 1 transpose times I define the next one because it's going to be there. 
okay? I hope all the details if you want to go and compute, but the, the thing is, how do I compute the derivatives? The only thing, the, the way to compute the derivative at the end, the argument is like this. It says, okay, I'm going to compute all the derivatives. The first one, is theta L transpose times uh, AL minus one, we'll see, yeah. Transpose times AL. The second one, is Theta L minus 1 transpose times A L minus 2 is a very simple thing. Why is very simple? Because we know an easy formula to go from one to the other. Because of that thing there that it says, okay, if you want to compute theta L minus 1, the only thing that you need is theta L, and then to compute theta L minus 1, delta L minus 1, is directly to do all this multiplication. And that's it. Until then. Okay. If you find me print or whatever, you are welcome to give me the... Okay, what do we do with all of this, no? Now, the, same, the first question is, the next question is, what do we do? Okay, we have all this derivative, we know how to compute the derivative, etc. What is the next step? How do we put this in the computer? And now it's coming the forward and backward. I start with theta 0, L minus 1, theta 0, 1. I put any value, this is not true. <laughs> okay, you know, starting value is. I start with any values, a huge, this is our, look at this, this is our matrices. I start with any matrix for each of them. What is the next step? What do, you, do I do now? I have all the parameters, I gave you the parameters. What do I do now? The algorithm, how it works, the algorithm. I will tell you what people say. Using forward, I compute my first estimators. Uh, how do I call this? No, I compute, yes, this one. That is going to be my y hat. How do I do that? Why is forward? Because I had to go forward to compute. To, in order to compute this one, I had to compute all the other before, because remember, this was the only one, the last one. And then I started, I have my data set, one point, and then we, uh, we put all the points. I have my, my point, one point. I compute, okay, I have my point, A1, I have this A1. I have my theta one, because I, I gave you one there. I compute the C2. Once I have the C2, I can compute the A2. <clears throat> when I have the A2, I can come and compute C2, C3. Why? Because this is I gave you a value. Once I compute C3, I can compute A3. Once I have A3, because I had the parameter I C4, until I arrive to the last one. This is why it's called forward, 
because I have to go in this direction, okay? I go in this direction. Because in some way, I have a way to see how is y hat with respect to y. With all the data set, I can do this. I take one data set, I take one data set, I compute my estimator, another data set, and an estimator for that data, for this one. Okay? Okay, what is the next step? The next one, the theta one, L minus one, I had to compute this one now. How do I do this? Well, it's telling me that is the, the, the one before that I make up, and now what do, you do, what do I do? Theta zero, <laughs> what do I do here? X, and I had to put the derivatives. But to put the derivative where? In this value. But to put the derivative in this value, I come back here, remember, I, I will compute the first one. Okay, let me compute the first, this one. How do I compute? Ah, I have my A's because in the forward I compute my A's. Do I have my, my delta? Yes, I have my delta because the Y is the true value. This is, I already have from the forward. I already have from the forward. I already have from the forward. I compute this derivative. Once I compute the first one, I go to the second, the, this is backward, I go backward. How do I compute that? I have my parameter because I make up the parameters, is the, the one before, I have this one, okay, from the one that I just compute, and this one I can compute because I have my C that I did in the forward. And I compute all of them backward. I put it here, the derivative, and I get another step. Now I have new parameters. I have to go and forward, I do the forward. And I write to my estimator and I see, well, maybe I'm close enough, I will finish. If I'm not close enough, since I have all my A or my C, I can compute the, the, the forward. This is why it's called forward and backward, because you need the both of them, okay? More or less, this is what I wanted to say. I know that if you want to understand, this is the general idea, now you have to go and see the computation and find mistake and tell me. And the best way to do is to put in the, if you know Python, this is, is like we have, here you have the, the algorithm and I, uh, you can do it with all with this information. I mean, it's not going to be an algorithm that is going to work very, uh, very quickly, but um, you will get answer. I have like, if you want, and you write me, I can send you like an uh, like an scheme. And if you know how to program in Python, you can do your program. I think it's important because all of this detail about backward and forward, I think until you don't do your program, you don't understand. But this is, for me, this is only to tell you that this is a model. Maybe it's a more complicated one because you have to do the forward, the backward. But the idea about forward and backward that people are talking about is what I told you. Okay, this is it. I don't know, you can have, you can ask me question and I can send you the program or the, the scheme of the program for you to do the, the algorithm itself. Yes, yes. The one that the, for classification numbers, to classify numbers. I mean, give you, if you program this, of course that there are some details I didn't tell you. How do you choose the S? This is like 1,000 papers. How do you, the initial values? And the other one is, for example, people put all the data set here, because now you have to use all the data set here, not only one point. But then there is a, a, a stochastic gradient, gradient that they take the one, only one data set every, every time to update, and it's a different point. 
or to take like a, like this is has a name and a specific name that I didn't know what they were talking about. It's like they take a, a few of the sample of the data set instead of taking all of them, but randomly every time, different ones. But for this data set, you can do with all the, it's going to be slow, but you can do with all the data set all the time. And after few iterations, it's working. If it's not working, you change the S, a smaller S, and I mean, it's, uh, and it works. This is why I can send you like the skin with all the latex and then without the program, and then you can do the program. Just to, if you know how to program, I mean, because it's the only way to learn. And after that, of course, this is a very simple thing, no? I mean, it doesn't have too much. Uh, now I think they are doing much more complicated things. But okay, but this is, I hope at least you are not feeling afraid about the deep learning, etc. <laughs> Questions? Send me an email. This is my email, and I will send you the the program. It's like a collab. I don't know. Do you program? I don't have the program in R, and I would like to have the program in R, but I didn't do the program in R, and somebody helped me to do the program. But uh, if you do in R, it's great too. I mean. And then I will accumulate the R program for this note. And everything that you under, I mean, if you read the notes, it should be pretty, uh, now there are like a lot of computation in the middle, but the general idea is this one. And I think you should do by yourself, like all the computation to be able to, to understand everything. I think the smart part, and your question was, if you choose always the same G. Yes, because in other case, how do you are going to do the iteration? Because look at this, the G, this one, the derivative, is always the same one. If you change the G, you in each iteration, okay, you can do that, but in each iteration you have to change this part. No, but well, okay, I wanted to do a very simple one, and still it's very complex, it's very messy. If you know how to program in R, it should be very nice to have a program in R. I like to have it because really it's a, 